so glad to be here. Uh, I'm working in Avito. My name is Viktor Yegafarov. I'm from Moscow. And this uh, conversation is about how we cook pitch bouncer in the Avito. Uh, a few words about Avito. Uh, in a few words, it's uh, uh, Russian Craigslist, the uh, third classified website in the world and the first in Russia. We have the audience of 35 uh, million active users monthly. That's uh, hun hundreds of millions uh, active items. And we have several big Postgres clusters with uh, uh, high load. Uh, it's about 15 to 25 transactions per second. And also we have over 300 pitch bonds instances. Uh, before we start, uh, can I do a stupid request? Uh, how many people are using pitch bonds here, please? Oh, so good. Not like in the Europe. <laughs> uh, we shall briefly go through these topics, as you see. And it's about load balancing, capacity planning, how we use PG Bouncer, of course, limitations, and some cool features, what does not work in PG Bouncer, what does not. Uh, why people using PG Bouncer? As we all know, uh, Postgres at each connection uh, forks a new backend. Uh, Forking backends in the Unix uh, Linux-like operation system is not uh, so bad thing, but uh, it is not cheap in Postgres because it acquires a proc array log, and where is the contention at this point? Uh, if you have uh, 800 or near that uh, transactions per second, and uh, connections per second, I mean. And if you reach it in modern CPU, Postgres starts work slowly. Our PG Bouncer helps to keep uh, connections open between Bouncer and Postgres. And also it helps economy with connections uh, to do economy. And uh, for us, it helps to do capacity planning by limiting resources by our application nodes for Postgres. Also, we use PG Bouncer for authentication features to improve our security requests. Uh, this is, at this picture, a uh, simplified schema of how we use PG Bouncer. And the upper side of the screen, there are containers. Uh, it may be Kubernetes containers or uh, Helix C nodes. And at the each container or at the pod, we have a PG Bouncer client side. We call it client side or application side PG Bouncer. And also at the at the downside, there is a PostgreSQL server. It's a bare metal standalone servers, and uh, it has also its own PG Bouncer. Uh, Why we use application side bouncers? Uh, if one of the container goes cr crazy and starts its own connections, it's will limited by client side PG Bouncer. And of course, uh, and by the way, we use uh, special PG Bouncer for developers. Uh, if developers need to connect to production database. And we use, uh, and by the way, we use all production PG Bouncer with uh, transaction pooling mode and uh, we use session pooling mode only for developers bouncer. I will explain wh why. Uh, please look at this slide. Where is a PG Bench tool running and connecting to PG Bouncer port and uh, option minus capital C makes a new connection for each query. Uh, if we do 
Ah, it, it is running a simple query, just select one. And if we do this benchmark, we have, uh, in the ty ty typical machine, we have uh, near the 700 transactions per second. But if we connect without PG Bouncer, in the same situation, we have only 700, 7,000 and 700. It's 10 times slower without PG Bouncer. That's why, that's one of our reason why we're using PG Bouncer. And also, the limit of PG Bouncer is uh, 25 transactions per second because it is uh, a single threaded application. Uh, it uses EPO or KQ model calling, but uh, it has uh, this limit. And sometimes some parts of code are not asynchronous there. But when we utilize one CPU by, by bouncer, we just set up near Postgres one more bouncer, and, and applications at the left side of the screen are connecting to separate bouncers on the server. Uh, at this example, we use a uh, remainder of division of application host name to determine what PG Bouncer we should use. Uh, how PG Bouncer is working? Our, at this example, at the left side was a uh, application container with two PHP workers and we have two simultaneously running transactions. And the full size for in the bouncer equals one. That means only one transaction can simultaneously run on the connection between bouncer and server. And the next slide full size is two and two transactions are running and third is waiting. At the next slide we have at this slide, we have uh, transaction full size two and all two transactions running simultaneously and the PG Bouncer works like a proxy. And here it is, one PHP worker is finished its own transaction and it was transaction two and is gone, but it keeps connection to PG Bouncer and thinks it's working with database but transaction three can reuse the server connection. Uh, this is the best benefit of PG Bouncer. It's kind of pipelining. And uh, this pool size of 160, we can serve uh, 25 transactions, transactions per second on one node, which is almost impossible without Bouncer. And uh, how we do capacity planning? We just count the number of application backends of microservice, count the number of simultaneous transa transactions for each backend. And we, at the client side, bouncer setting the full size using formula maximum simultaneous transactions per second plus one. Uh, one is the reserve pool size which are we using. And when we, and after we set the pool size on server side bouncer, using this data, the application side bouncer size multiplied by number of application backends plus one. It helps us to limit resources for Postgres and remove, uh, smooth the spikes of applications. Uh, about load balancing, uh, we use, for load balancing, we use HA proxy. We're using HA proxy on each application node. And uh, HA proxy determine what uh, database is alive and sends traffic to it. Oh, of course, we, we use uh, only HA proxy for standbys not for master. We, 
then uh, we can do automatic failover only for standby. How is it working? At the application side bouncer, we uh, we have connections string, which means pool like that. It connects to local hosts and port 16.0.0.2, for example. And the port 16.0.0.2 is HA proxy. Where is uh, HA proxy config? Uh, it listens this port and uh, connects to databases. The last first third strings is a pool in terms of HA proxy. It connects to database and doing health check to localhost port 5777. And the option HTTP check is a feature called HTTP check in the proxy which connects to some web server to do health checks and uh, it's using this get query with the database name, username, port name. But uh, what is listening on port 5777? Uh, where is a XNLD tool? XNLD just uh, grab TCP data and uh, sends it to STD standard input of our, our script. Uh, the script is uh, with a simplified version of our script. It's written on Perl. I don't know why. And uh, it's just doing health checks. It connects to database using data from get query. It's, it simulates HTTP server uh, by parsing STD. And it performs call of storage procedure called check HA. And uh, what is the check HA? This is a simplified example with just allowing to add or remove nodes from all our hyproxy pools. We're returning one and when we can use it or we're returning zero, we can't use it. And uh, in the real life we use more complicated function which counts the lock and so on. I mean uh, replication lock. And by the way, each health check is collected by our time series database. It collects it in non-blocking way and each check writes a typo like this. It's client node, uh, it's host name. The pool which is checking backend with database name, the state up or down, error description, uh, it's an ex exception. It may be alive or disabled manually if we return zero. And time of each health check. It allows to draw the graphics like this. At the green line is the amount of application containers which is alive and zero line is a uh, health uh, failed uh, container. We can uh, using this data uh, try to understand what's happening with these containers and once we found um, micro freezes in our rate controllers by equaling the number of valid health checks on some nodes and uh, error in the DMSC log. Uh, about tuning, uh, config variables. At the upside of the slide we have a pool in terms of pitch bouncer. The pool size is 10, it's a limiting feature. And also we have pool mode transaction, of course, and uh, maximum DB connections is 10. I will explain later what is it. 
And uh, we have Connect Query. Connect Query helps to prepare plans, setting uh, variables, uh, session variables inside uh, connection between balancer and server. And it's very convenient to do it like this. Also, we use uh, socket dir. Uh, the socket dir is using for a cool feature named uh, online restart. We can upgrade, even upgrade pitch balancer without losing a connection. And this uh, option should be enabled. As I said before, we use HBA authentication system with user list and HBA file rules. Uh, and we have uh, max client connections on the server side bouncer bigger than application side bouncer. And the pool size, as I said before, is in the server side bouncer always calculated by a formula. Uh, at this slide in the middle is reserve file size option. Why are we using it? Because it is only way to detect that uh, pool is overfilled, uh, fulfilled, I mean. And if pool becomes filled, a PG bouncer will write a message to the log, uh, like uh, taking connection from reserve pool. It's only way to detect this. And also the timeouts like server time, lifetime and idle, server idle timeout is much bigger on the server side bouncer because we need uh, to keep uh, long connections. And we need to keep it uh, lower in the application side bouncer. And other things are specific for our workload. And we shall think what we're doing, why, why when touches with config sections. And uh, what about limitations in Bouncer? At this slide, uh, the left side, as the source code of Bouncer, which uh, there is a number of variables, some variables. We're interested with, or this interesting uh, date style, client in calling, time zone. And uh, what's happening if someone connects to server side Bouncer by IDE? Uh, ADE likes to set uh, its own date style, but uh, application, if, if your application see different date style, it may crash. Uh, I mean, YMD or DMI, it's different in the US, in the Europe. And if, and when it's set it with uh, date style, PG Bouncer will cache it, and client side PG Bouncer, which is connected, will cache it, it too. And even if you stop server side Bouncer and run it again, the uh, client side Bouncer will connect to it and set this variable again, and it will spread to in your project like a uh, cancer. The only thing you can do with it just stop the whole PG Bouncer and start it again, which is a disaster. And why, and that's why we don't use PG Bouncer, uh, production PG Bouncers and these ideas. Uh, developers are connecting to their own specific uh, development bouncer with a statement pull mode because some of IDs don't work with uh, 
transaction pooling mode. We want to prepare its statements, session variables, which is not possible via transaction pooling mode. And those uh, IDs can change your search path and where your application will crash. Uh, one interesting thing with pools are at the left side we have a config of pitch bouncer. We have one pool with pool size of five. Uh, we think it, we limited this pool to five and there is only five connections to database from Bouncer. But if you, if we add the, another user to use the list of Bouncer, what's happening? The pitch Bouncer will create really two pools in the, its um, memory. And we have not five, we have 12 database connections with counting of reserve connection. To avoid it, we're using max database connections, max DB connections equals to pool size to really limit it. Uh, as I said before, what does not working as intended as I said before, uh, max DB connections were contradicted in descriptions. Uh, descriptions say that uh, it limits the whole connections to, that, to the database, but it only limits a uh, number of active sessions from any user to the pool. And next interesting feature, I don't transaction timeout. You should not use it before it's patched because uh, the timer is broken and it can kill the really healthy transactions. And for example, query timeout works the same. It can kill the running and healthy transactions. And the next interesting thing is orphan query issue. Uh, when client connects to Postgres, and starts one grinding query, and then client dies for any reason. Uh, the ohm killer, uh, maybe bug in your Python code, or whatever. And what's happening in the PostgreSQL? Query will continuously running and consume your resources before query stops, and then Postgres will try to send uh, data to the socket and when it fails and when it's we roll back its transaction. But I saw never ended queries by, uh, it was back in the R application and I wrote a patch to, to help detect these transactions and kill them using the PG Bouncer. And, but uh, there is two year, old, two year old pull request and it's still not merged. And what else does not work? Uh, for example, if you're using feature online restart, you can crash your Bouncer by adding or removing pulls before doing this restart. But it probably happens on high loads and not uh, shown so often. And also we found a PGGBDC driver uh, bug. When a PGGBDC driver wants, sometimes wants to set read-only for transaction, but it sets is for whole session, which is not working in transaction pooling mode. And one interesting uh, feature or bug, I don't know, in the bouncer, if you execute query through bouncer, and afterwards you Postgres is crashed, so you kill the TCP connection for testing. 
and then next connection to the bouncer who will get an error. It's uh, not, uh, it will be a PG bouncer cannot connect to server. And it's annoying when you cron failed, when, for example, if your database is crashed 12 hours ago and cron connects, connects to it and get crashed because I think it was this part of code of bouncer not truly asynchronously and they did this feature. And the next example we have situation when developers were writing code like this in the function name at this first step of we connect to first database, do some work, and become idle in transaction to do something on the another database. But uh, in the function B, we firstly go to second database and then to first. And in this example, pool size is one, and uh, these functions will lock each other forever and it will be a classic ABA locking, but uh, it may be any source of uh, data, not uh, database or Postgres, it may be uh, that image store or something else. Uh, to avoid this, this don't use either one transaction. And a few words about monitoring. We have, if we connect to bouncer admin console and type show pools, we can see CL waiting. Uh, we think uh, which metrics shows uh, how many uh, queries are waiting for a pool. It should be zero in good time. And I think the, this, uh, this uh, metric is the main of the PG bouncer because your monitoring is useless, useless if you don't monitor this feature. And uh, unfortunately, this metric is not a counter, it's uh, just uh, showing current value and it's hard to detect uh, anomalies with it. Uh, I'm trying to fix it in this patch, but still did not. <laughs> there is a bug on my patch. So, our wish list to pitch bouncer. We want uh, like to see a uh, seal waiting as a counter. We like to kill the queries from dead clients. I mean, our fun client user. And also we want to normal error logging and fixing timers to use interesting features which are broken now. And also we want a normal project development. Uh, we, ho we have a lot of ideas to improve it, but no one wants it because uh, project developing is freezed now. So, thank you. Questions, maybe? Yes. Uh, about authentica authentication methods, uh, we use uh, MD5. Uh, And uh, uh, do you think what what else? Something else? Uh, I I mean. Ah, the question is why it's more easily without pitch balancer. Ah, you think is it's uh, more easily without pitch balancer? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, when uh, in the PGHBL PG bouncer we can uh, set the networks which are allowed to connect to specific databases, uh, specific users which are allowed to connect to specific uh, databases of course and so on uh, because uh, we are floating it from uh, database because we need to store uh, passwords in the database but we can uh, store it in the PG bouncers file <coughs> and we can uh, drop connections from untrusted networks to the uh, uh, production PG bouncer Uh, yes, we did, but it was a long time ago, and we keep opening connections uh, between uh, client side bouncer and server side bouncer to reduce uh, TCP handshake overhead, for example. But uh, it's not a huge overhead. It's uh, about one or two milliseconds, as I remember. Yeah. Uh, what's the question? Is it? Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, limit of the CPU. It utilizes only one core of CPU. And uh, I mean modern CPUs, Xeon E5, uh, I forget the model. Uh, it's and uh, we just put another bouncer, it, it works perfect. Uh, you're telling you have 60,000 transactions in one bouncer? Yeah, single traded. Uh, is a query about how many transactions per second we have in the uh, queries? Statements per second. Uh, now we must have load our must our must have loaded database serves uh, from 10 to 15 transactions per second, and uh, and the spikes it is 25 transactions, thousand transactions per second, of course. Uh, maybe I I, I don't uh, hear a whole question. Uh, 
Mm. Could we use only the reserve pool one? Uh, because we need it only for detecting uh, this uh, overfilling. Um, Uh, uh, we can see it in the graphics when uh, we grab in uh, each 30 seconds uh, monitoring, uh, CO waiting, uh, uh, how to say, variable from show pools of administration console. But now we're not tailing the PG balancers logs and when something goes wrong goes wrong uh, we see uh, application errors uh, like the PG balancer cannot connect to server we uh, open logs and see the problem but if we don't use uh, reserve pool size we can't see any anomalies in the logs Excuse me, handle. LDAP. Uh, I forget, sorry. <laughs> it's, it is re written in the documentation, but I not try it. I don't know. Ah, another question? Uh, we have uh, the question is how we handle with uh, after scaling applications. Uh, uh, we have the checklist for developers, and when someone wants to make a new service, he tells us how many simultaneous transactions it will be doing and uh, maximum and minimum and so on. And if always it's okay and if we need more resources, we're just thinking where it's put this database to and maybe to another physical server or maybe just enlarge the pool size and so on. Uh, uh, excuse me, my audible uh, skills is not quite good, but. I'm sorry for my audible skills. I <laughs> can't understand the question.
Uh, yes, uh, our number is near the 800 uh, connections. Yeah, it becomes slowly by managing uh, these backends in the proc array. So no questions? Yes, it will send it through a stack of bounce as tested it. But Uh, the, this, uh, uh, you mean the, this patch about uh, can canceling orphan backends? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it will uh, cancel, uh, server-side bouncer will catch that clients, clients is going, is go away and, and it see that. Just cancel query by control dot control. Sure. <laughs> um, I think we have tested it and uh, it's work okay with canceling. You can connect from client side bouncer and press control C. Uh, when the query is running and it will work, why not? No questions? That's all, thank you.